All right. So this week, we're going to look at Birkas Kohanim, which came up in last week's Parsha in Parsha Sinoso, uh, with the Psukim that said, Vaidaber Hashem Amosha Lemor, Daber El Aharon, Vial Banav Lemor, Kosevarchu as Bnei Yisrael, Emor Lahem. So this pasuk is very interesting. Um, as this, as you know, we try to understand what does that mean, Kosev or Hu. Um, and it, it, uh, it says Daber El Aharon El Banav Lemor. So speak to Aaron and his and his sons, saying. But then it says at the end of the pasuk, Emor Lahem, right? Kosev or Hu Bnei Yisrael Emor Lahem. So this pasuk requires a lot of um, you know sort of explanation as to what this what, what this is trying to teach us. Uh, then we get into the actual bracha that the Kohanim give to us. We're not going to get into what these brachos actually mean, but it does uh, seem that they're talking about both um, Gashmi and Ruchani type of brachos. But again, we're not going to get into that specifically. Um, and then at the end of the parsha is with Samu as Shemi Abene Yisra Vani Avarchem. So it would seem as though if we think that the Kohanim are the ones who are blessing us, this Pasuk seems to be telling us that, um, that Hashem is the one who is doing the blessing. So we're going to do a little bit of a deeper dive. We're going to start with the Kliyakar, just to understand what's really going on here um, from more of a Machshava perspective, and then we'll get into um, some of the Halachos as brought down by the Rambam. So the Kliyakar says... Uh, as B'nei Yisrael. So he starts by saying, Samach <clears throat> Habrachos that um in the in Parsha's Naso, the uh Berkas Kohanim comes up right after the Parsha on Nazirus. So what is the connection between uh Berkas Kohanim and Nazirus? He says that uh it is that Kia Yain Kovea Bracho Laatzmo Avolo Laacherim. So it's an interesting idea that he's bringing down here that the, we know that from the bracha from the uh, gemara brachos that uh, yayin has a special bracha to itself bori priya gefen. Um, however, that's not necessarily yayin is not necessarily a bracha for for others for the klal. So this is the other actually the opposite. Hevi yelala klala laolam. It actually brought um, curse to the world. Lamanda amar eitz hadas gefen haya. So the Gemara in Sanhedrin that he quotes that according to the Manda Amar that the Eitz Hadas was Gefen, that it actually brought a Klala, and it also brought Klala to Adam Bechava, Lazaro Shonoach, and to Noach's um, offspring as well, from the whole episode of, of when he was unclothed. Uh, Lot, uh, from his uh, from the daughters of Lot after, after the episode in Sodom. So we see there's a lot of clothes that's brought from Geffen, Umilas Ko, but what does it mean, Kosovar Hu? So that, Koyaha Parsha Shalamala, Lomasha Koin, Amavorech, Lo Yihi Eshasu Yayim, Baamdu Lavorech is Yisrael. That uh, it's coming to teach us that the Kohen cannot have had wine to drink when he's coming to bless, uh, uh, you know, do Birkas Kohanim when he's going to bless Yisrael. It has to be said to us, to uh, the um, to Bnei Israel, and uh, you can't have Emor Lahem lahem if you're a shikr, because we know that uh, somebody who is uh, who, who's drunk cannot uh, speak in front of a king. So, okay. so therefore, with uh, re- regards to actually making Berchaz Kohanim, they have to be like Nazir, meaning that they have not had any wine to drink. Obamilas Ko, Kosem Po Habrachos. And there's another idea of Ko that uh, the Kli Yaker says, of Kosev Varchu, that Shehiu Dogemis Berchaz Avram Shins Baruch Beko Shenamar. That when we learned about the, the Brachos to, uh, that Hashem gave to Avraham, it said it with the word Ko. Hashem says to Avram Avinu that um, that your uh, that that you, know, you go out and, and look at the stars in the sky and that, that you can't you can't count them. So it says ko So so too will be your offspring. So ko is is an introduction of bracha. V'alkein ratzah bilam levata Yisrael berchas ko shene amar he sets if ko al alasech vani vanochi korek ko. So he's the Kliyakar is making a connection to our 
pasuk of Kosivarhu, and to the bracha by Bilam, where Bilam says to Balak, he says, Yitzatsiv Ko stand here with your with your offering, and I am gonna go and try and beseech Agarj Barhu. But it says the word ko twice, Yitzatsvu ko vikareko. So he says the Kliyakar says the Amru Bimedrish Ata Bikorbanosecho Tevata Birchas Ko Yazaracha. So what's really going on here? Bilam is talking to Balak and saying that with your um Horban, you're gonna be Mevatel, the bir- the Brach of Ko Yihazaracha. That's what it says Yitzyatsev Ko Al Alosecha Vani Bilam Evatel Birkas Ko Sevorhu, and I will be Mevato the Bracha. Of of the Birkas Kohanim, uh, as I try to beseech Hakadosh Baruch Hu. So there's a connection there of of maybe an, a deeper idea of what exactly Bilam was attempting to do, and perhaps also we can understand the power of Birkas Kohanim that it must have been something that Bilam was actually wanting to meet Mivatel <clears throat> that uh, sort of stands maybe in, you know in, in terms of the power of it is is on par. With the bracha of uh, to Avram Avinu of Ko Yihi Azaracha. So the next um, the next bit the Kliyakar continues, um, and he says another word, another another vort, another idea of the word Ko. So it says Ulai Mispar Kohu B'Zechus Chof Dalid Matanus Kahuna. So he says maybe it's really connected to the twenty four Matanus Kahuna, Matanus Kahuna, like uh, the um, like Trumas and Maestras and all those things, there's 24 of these different types of uh, gifts to the Kohen. V'im birchas kohanim hare chofe Matanus Kahuna. And if you include birchas kohanim, that becomes 25. B'zechus cham chala bracha Yisrael, because in the zechus of, of, of the Kohanim, we get this bracha on on that's chal on Yisrael. Vim tisha mahana yesh the kohanim be bracha zu shetihi and nechshavas be klal kol matanus kahula kahuna. And if you're going to ask me, well, 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 wait a second here. What? Why is this a gift to the kohen? What? What do they get out of blessing Yisrael? How do? How? How does it? Uh, how do they get hana from that? So Talmud Lamar the the, the pasuk again by Avram Avinu va'varcha mevarchecha. Those that I will bless, those who bless you. So therefore, if the Kohanim are blessing us, they will also be blessed. So there's their, that is also Hana, and therefore, Berkas Kohanim could be a Matanus, one of the Matanus Kahuna. So, Im Kain, Ayide Bracha Zu, Yikadu Gam Hema Bracha. Ba'o Chenusecha Brachos, Yivarechecha Hashem. The also, another way to look at this is the Nusech of the Bracha, of the, of the first Brachas, Yivarechecha Hashem. Hashem will bless you. That again, that one of these, that the idea of the brachos, at least to some extent, is gashmi, and that uh, our property is will increase. So brachazu chazeres gam the kohanim. So if we bnei Israel, the rest of the the, the those are not from uh, from the, they're not kohanim are blessed with our property. Then that will go back to the kohanim. Yirbu matnas kuhuna trumas umaisras yimlokein me ay nichu ha ha amina goren amina yekev. So if when our properties go up uh, in value or in quantity uh, in quality, then that also comes right back to the kohanim through the trumas and maestras. Because if not, you know where do you think all these trumas and maestras come from? They come from our properties, and if those get better, then truly it goes back to the kohanim as well. So there's another idea of ko. Of Kosovar Hu, meaning that it's a hint, a remez, that uh, this is one of the Manas Kahuna. Okay, one last bit by the Kliyakar, um, and then we'll look at the Rambam. And this one, the Kliyakar is actually starting to get a bit more of the, uh, the, the, the what, what is actually the, the fun, you know, how, how does Birkas Kohanim function? What's the methodology behind it? So here, the, where the pasuk says, Emor Lahem, that was that last bit of the, um, of the, in, in the, the, in the pasuk that we saw where it says uh, three different ways to, to say that, to say this to Aharon and his, and his children, that uh, are his sons, and they have to bless um, Israel, And then, and more lahem is how the post ends. So, we call them to Chazal, makriv makri lahakohanim mila b'mila. This is where we learn, what does it mean, emor lahem? That we do it word by word, right? The Chazan says, yevarechecha, and then the Kohanim respond, yevarechecha, etc. Okay. 
So that's that's how we do the nusach of the brachos. V'tam u'sho davar she'achazen hu hasir sura moshech shefat sinur mimkor habrachos tchila. So how does this work? Well, it's really that the chazan himself becomes the becomes like a conduit uh, for the source of the brachos. Uh, he is the initial conduit of that source. And then umariko sam al rosh kohanim yachulu. And then he sort of empties that uh, that 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 conduit or continues the conduit to pr- provide them the uh, the chalos of the brachos on to the kohanim. Yehu amar tachila el hakohen yevarchacha Hashem. Because he starts by saying the words, So this way the Kohanim can become um, a Kli that is that is full of Bracha. So now when the Kohan says, etc., and then therefore he is giving from a Kli Malay, from a full Kli, to Bnei Israel, to us who are sitting um, in the shul, that we are kli reka. We don't have that bracha yet, so they're giving it over to us from a full kli to, a, to an empty kli. But if you didn't have that mechanism where the chazan is saying it word by word and providing the bracha to the Kohen, to the Kohen first, then the Kohen would be also an empty kli, giving it over to an empty kli. He says now that that's how it functions. He says now it's also miyushav something. When the pasuk says that I will bless, Hashem is saying I will bless those um, who bless you, and I will uh, and those who curse you, I will curse. Really, it should have said that I will curse those who curse you. Right, it's it's sort of backwards. The first part is I will bless those who bless you, but then it says and those who curse you, I will curse. So it's like why aren't they consistent in how the words are are, are put the order of the words? So Ella Jerusalem Kohen Hamevarich Es Yisrael Ani Mevarcho Techila. So really, what this is meaning is that when the Kohen is blessing the uh, uh, blessing Israel, so Ani Mevarcho Techila Kedei Lasus is a Kohen. So this is very, it works very well with what the Kli Yakra was just saying, that I will bless those who bless you, meaning that I am going to make this conduit work so such that the Kohanim become a Kli that's Male uh, of Bracha, and then they can give over from a Kli Male over to a Kli that's, uh, that, that, that's empty. About Beklala, in Shaykh Lo Markein, there, uh, Hashem is not going to start by cursing. Only after we are cursed will He curse those who curse us, but He's not going to preempt it. So now this goes back to that last pasuk that um, I will put my name right in, in uh, on Bnei Israel and I will bless them to first, meaning that He is going to first bless. The Kohanim, so they can, uh, you know, in, in turn bless Yisrael. So, so this is how the mechanism works. It goes from the Chazan to the Kohen to Yisrael, but it only works because the Kodesh Baruch Hu was saying, "I will bless those who, who bless who bless you." So that's the mechanism that makes it work for the Kohanim to bless us. Okay, so that's the Kliyakar in, in how he sort of darshans and understands the Psukim even some of it with regards to uh, the halacha itself. So now um, we might want to ask ourselves, well, how did, you know, how, how does this work that um, Berchas Kohanim ends up in our Shemona Esrei, and it has all the different halachos that it has in terms of how the Kohanim do what they do, uh, you know, in terms of when they go up to, to Duchan and uh, what they're doing, they don't have their shoes on, they're doing things with their fingers, what's all that about? So the Rambam says, "Bishachris b'Musaf u'b'Neila, Hakohanim nosim es kapeyam." So the Rambam first starts by saying that when Shachris, Musaf, and Neila, those are the times when then we have berkas kohanim. Avav b'Mincha ein nesis kapeyam, but not at Mincha. Why? Mipnei she b'Mincha kvar sa'adu kol ha'am shemashas u'konim yai v'shikar asu b'nesis kapeyam. Like we saw earlier in the Kliyakar, 
this by because of Naziris, right? This this juxtaposition with the Naziris, we know that the Kohanim cannot have uh, had anything to drink before, and by Mincha, everyone is already. Uh, eaten, and therefore it's possible that they also had wine, therefore we don't do Birkas Kohanim at Mincha. And on an ordinary fast, I mean, uh, this, you know, on a fast that you might take on yourself or something like that, that um, we also don't have um, Birkas Kohanim because it's a Gzira because of a regular Mincha. So when do we have, because we she said up above, um, that uh, it says, um, it says, kohanim no kapehem. So what are we talking about? Um, so what are we talking about? Oh, it feels mincha shalem. Sorry, when do we say when when we don't have uh we don't uh, do um we don't do uh um uh, birkas kohanim when 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 do we sing that we don't do that? It's when shemispalim ba mincha neila kigon som kipor v'tanis sibor v'tanis she'ein bo neila kigon tisha ba v'shiva asu betamuz. There we don't have neila. However, it feels mincha shalem samuch le shkias akam ahari nearest ke neila. Right, because we know that on a on, on an ordinary um tiny sibor that we do tend to have Erkas Kohanim um as part of Mincha. Why is that? Because we do Mincha later on. We do it and it's and it's done in in a time and it's done in such a way that we're not going to mix it up with the mincha of, of the other days. And so there's never any confusion that possibly they've eaten because it's a tainus. Uh, and and uh, and therefore they, no one's had anything to eat or drink, so therefore we could have birkas kohanim. Um, Okay, so on 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 uh, on Yom Kippur and on other fasts, we know that they have not had anything to drink, and so it's not a problem. So he said he nesias kapayim begvulim. So how do we do Birkas Kohanim outside of Israel, outside of uh, where we would be doing it in the base of Mikdash? So beis sheyagi shalich tzibur lavoda kashiyomer et say koha kohanim haomdim bevesa kenesas neakamim koma v'holchim v'olin leduch of omdim sham paneim lehecho. So he gives us the whole order of how this works. Once the Shleich Tzibur gets to Ritzei, to Avoda, that's when the Kohanim leave their places. They go up onto the platform. That's what the Duchen is, right? The platform. And they start to do what they do with their with their hands to get ready. And he, and he continues to give us the whole play-by-play of how this works. Um, after, after he finishes Modim, then after the Shleich Tzibur finishes Modu, Maxim Paneim Klape Ha'am, then the um the Kohanim are now gonna face the people, face the uh face the Tzibur, Poshtim Esbo Sehem, Bim Yedeim Kenegad, his famous Maskilim Yabrachacha, which Shleich Tzibur, Mikre Osa Mila Mila, Vain Omrim Shinemar, Emor Lehem. So the Rambam says, just like the Kliyakar taught us, that Emor Lehem is how we know that we do it Mila Bimila, word by word. Okay. And then Kesha. Mashlimim pasuk rishon kolam onim amen. After they do the first pasuk, the sibor says amen. The chosir shleich sibor makreosam pasuk sheni mila b'mila. Then we go. Then the then once they say amen, then the shleich sibor will continue with the second pasuk word by word. In onim um ad she mashlim pasuk sheni v'chol am onim onim v'chein bas b'pasuk shlishi. That's what we do the second and the third pasukim as well. So kesha yashlima kawanim shlosh psuki maschah shlech tzibur bracha achronisho tefila shehi sim shalom. So then after that the shlech tzibur will continue with sim shalom. Kawanim achzirim pneim klapi akodesh. Okay, and then and then at that point the kawanim can turn around, um, and and face the uh, the aron uh, again. Okay. So then he says in in the next uh, in the next halacha in hamakre rashai akros lakonim achi yichle amen mipiat sibor. So this is interesting in that there's an order in which we do things, and um, the shlech sibor has to be patient and wait until everyone has said has finished saying amen, and the kohanim cannot start um, with their bracha until the in, until 
um, until the uh, m- until the makre, whether that's the chaz himself or if there's a separate makre, um, who says the, the the first word. So they shouldn't be um, saying words over the makre either. The makre should be should be saying it word by word, um, and it has to be. He says a word. Cohen says a word. Word than a word. They shouldn't be you know sort of talking over each other. In the tzibur has to wait until the kohanim have finished their bracha, then they say amen. So it's very clear that uh, this all has to be done. Sometimes we 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 rush a little bit, but we shouldn't be. We shouldn't be, you know, sort of talking over each other. Um, all right, we're just going to look at a couple of more of these halachas, a couple of interesting halachas. Um, Right, so in Pasuk Zion, no, sorry, in Halacha Zion, so another question that comes up is, well, we're not supposed to be facing the Kohanim, and why Why is that? Why don't we face, you know, why, why can't we watch what the Kohanim are, do, are doing? Rabbi says, So the idea is that uh, the Tzibor is looking down, we're not looking at the Kohanim, in order that uh, we don't have hesachadas, in order that we can focus on what the words are and not focus on what the actions are that the Kohanim are actually doing. We should be facing the ground just like we would be doing during tefillah so that we can focus on the words. Okay. Um, Let's see, there's maybe uh, one or two more that we're going to look at, and then we'll finish up. So in Halakha Tess, the Rambam says, Ketzad Birkas Kohanim Bamikdash. So how did it work in the base of Mikdash? So HaKohanim Olim Laduchan, similar to in the base of Knesset, the Kohanim would get up onto the platform. So when do they do that, though? Achar Shiyashlimu HaKonim Avodas Tamit Shoshachar. They would do it after they finished the the um the carbon tamid uh, in the morning the carbon tamid shoshachar magbini yedeim lamala al gabei rashehem as we say pshutos kutz bikoin gadol now all of the kohanim do this except the kohen gadol because he's wearing the tzitz and so I guess his hands are not supposed to go above where the tzitz is veechad makre yosam mila b'mila and just like we have a shliach tzibur so there they have a makre the color out of the words word by word kedech shosim magvulin ashi yashlimu shlosh apsukim so another difference is that in the base of Mikdash, it's all one long bracha. It's not three separate brachos, like it is uh, in our shuls. Okay. So that's a little bit different. But now we also understand why is it that we do Berkas Kohanim right after the Avoda. Uh, and right before Sim Shalom, it's because we're 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 sort of mimicking how it was in the base of Mikdash. It was right after the avoda of the Tamit Shoshachar, which is connected our tefillah. So after the avoda piece of our tefillah, that's when the Kohanim Duchan. So that's why how it ends up in our Shemona Esrei. All right. Um, All right, and then one last uh, piece that we're going to look at is, um, we'll, get, we'll look at the Shulchan Aruch for this. Uh, I think it was in the Rambam too, but um, I'm just not seeing it at the moment. So just bring it from the Shulchan Aruch. So another thing that we see the Kohanim doing is, Lo yalu a Kohanim leduchan b'minalim b'bate shukim shari. So we know that the Kohanim don't wear shoes when they do them. So why is that? So the Mishnah Brewer explains, b'minalim, it says, Shema, um, and this is, by the way, this is a takana from Ezra, but uh, it's it's uh, the problem is that Shema Yifzak Lo Ritzu of a Ganai Hu Lo Mitzlosesim Alav Kishe Sandalo Muteras Vikshirena Baod Shachaver of Mevorachim. So what happens if your shoe becomes untied or becomes unbuckled or what have you, and you're a Kohen, you're up on the Duchan, and you bend down to fix it because that's what people do when their shoe comes undone. And everyone else, all the other Kohanim are 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 making the you know saying the the mila b'mila the brachos, um, and you're not, and, and you're tying your shoe. So what are people going to say? 
So people are going to say that uh, why isn't he making the brachos? So the Vayom Rosha Ben Gerusha Ben Chalutza, they're going to say you're not really a real Kohen. And that's why he's not making the brachos. He's up there, but he's not, he's not a real Kohen. So we don't want that to happen. We don't want anyone having the wrong thoughts about our Kohanim. So the Kohanim go up without their shoes. So even if today we don't, uh, you're wearing shoes that don't have ties or whatever, we say it's a low plug. You still go up to Duchan uh, without your shoes on. So with that, we'll finish, but to hopefully that gives us more insight as to um, how the Berchaz Kohanim, uh, you know, sort of functions from, from the Kliyakar and also some of the basic halachas that we see uh, gives us more of an insight as to why they are the way they are. So with that, we'll stop here.